Bless you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus, our risen Savior and Sinner. We thank God for another day, another week, that he has blessed us and certainly another opportunity since this is the day that he has made. Uh, we ought to at least let him know how we feel, how appreciative uh, we are of him, and at least we ought to give him some homage. We ought to give him some praise, give him some, some thank you, some hallelujah, some glory just for him being who uh, he is. Send it to all of our New Hopians, to all of our friends and family that shares with us uh, each uh, time during this week, during this our weekly um, uh, ministry here, study here at the New Hope Church, and certainly we're grateful for you taking the time out of your busy schedule uh, to be able to be a part uh, with us uh, through this uh, miracle way of uh, Facebook and sending with social media. We're grateful uh, for you. I want you to just take a quick moment out and call or text or inbox um, uh, a family a church member of family member, friend, and uh, let them know that this uh, weekly ministry here uh, at the church will do them good, not only today, but in the days to come. Certainly our prayers goes out to all those in our church family and our community and certainly uh, throughout this land that are going through season of sickness and certainly a season of bereavement. Uh, we certainly want you to know that you not just uh, in our prayers, but you also in our thoughts. Certainly those are men and women behind uh, jail and prison walls. Uh, we praying for you and certainly we uh, want you to know that um, just like the, uh, the jailer in the Philippian jail is that um, when that miracle took place uh, with Paul and Silas is that that uh, jailer wanted to know uh, what must he do to be saved and and so I want you to know that uh, just to believe and repent that he can save you uh, even behind uh, jail and prison walls. Certainly to those uh, who also are on a um, battlefield to protect in a country and center that we are praying for you. Uh, let us pray, gracious and all wise God, our Father, we come today just as we are, empty pitches before full fountain. Gracious God, we come to you because you are our only hope, you are our strength, you are our provider, you are our sustainer, you are our all in all, and God, we just come into you because we have no one else that can do us any good but you and you only. Lord, we come confessing, repenting of all of our sins, whether they be sins of omission or sins of commission. God, you know our hearts, you know our heart's desire. And God, you did say in your word that if we confess our sins, that you are still faithful and that you are just to forgive us. And God, you said if we do that, is that you will cast them in a sea of forgetfulness, that you would uh, allow them to, as far as to be removed, as far as the east is from the west. And God, we're taking you at your word. We believe you, O oh Father. We trust you because you said in all our ways, Lean not to our own understanding, but trust and depend on you and that you promise to direct our path. God, we're going to take you at your word. And Lord, we just want to thank you for this, pro this privilege of being able to talk to you. Hear our faintest cry. And Lord, whatever the needs are that your people stand in, you, you are able. You said that you will, you will bless us according to your riches and glory, and God, we 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 taking you at your word. We believe, we believe you, O oh Father, and we just ask that I would just meet all the people's need according to your will and glory. Bless us now, God. We praying that you just stretch forth your healing hands and touch those who have all manners of sickness, even those who are going through some spiritual sickness. And God, we praying that I would uh, touch them. We plead the blood of Jesus, and we thank you. Dear God, that by your stripes we are healed. God, we, we, we just thank you now, dear God, that for the healing that is taking place in our body and in our mind and in our spirit. Bless us now. Bless our New Hope Church family. Continue to, to hold us. Continue to, God, to allow us to be prosperous in the way that you will see fit as we honor you with our, our first fruit, as we honor you, dear God, with our time. Thank you that you chose us and we did not choose you. Thank you for saving us. Right in the nick of time, bless us now. 
And God, we ask you to come down in the presence of the Holy Spirit, touch our spiritual ears that we can hear, our eyes that we can see, our hearts that we can accept what you would have to say to us on this day. We ask now that you let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are our rock, and thank you for being our redeemer. In your sweet son Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. All right, let's get right into our discussion on today as we're still dealing with uh, stewardship. And we want to, like, we're going to be going back and forth dealing with the uh, areas of stewardship that dealing with um, our time and our resources, our talents, our gifts, uh, as we deal dealing with uh, 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 spreading the uh, the gospel of salvation is that all of that is in t entails with uh, stewardship. But I want to focus in on today in that sixth chapter of Luke, uh, verses forty-six to forty-nine, and I want I want to I want to focus in on uh, managing our time. I say that with me. I, I want to manage my time, uh, time that uh, the Lord has. Uh, allocated to me. I want to manage it. I want to be good stewards of my time because when we think about it is that um, every time uh, the numbers are being uh, uh, zero down to, to the seconds is that, is that something has happened. Uh, uh, something, something is happening and even in um, uh, this uh, world of corrupt is that bombs are going off and uh, something, something is just, uh, something is ending. Um, and then not only is something ending, but something uh, new, something is beginning. Say that with me. When it get, when we start counting all the way down from 10 to zero, <clears throat> is that two things happening. Is that something or someone is ending, or something or someone is beginning? That's that that that's a that's a that's a life of beginning, then as a life of ending. And we have to understand that the moment we are born, born, we are assigned a clock. That 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 that's, that's an unseen clock that is ticking. Oh yeah, I, I hate to I hate to tell you that, but that's the truth. Is that is that is that every um, a second is that um, uh, uh, that we, is is that that clock that is being is ticking. Is that we like to think the clock is ticking? Um, many on the false impression in your favor, but that's not true. When, when we see a little child, we think that that child um, uh, have what um, I think uh, Moses says in the ninety number of Psalms about um, 70 and 80, is that we kind of think that um, that child uh, have 70 or 80 years ahead of him or her. But the, re the, but the reality of it is, is that that is that that child is losing time uh, uh, at a rate, or get this now, of 86,400 seconds each and every day. Let, let me say it again. Uh, when we think about childhood, and I want you to kind of think in terms of how long you've been here, is that the reality of it is, is that every child is losing time at a rate of 86,400 seconds each and every day. It is estimated that the, that the time the child reaches the age of 35, the child will have, get this now, 500 days left to live. By the time the child reaches 35, the age of 35, the child will have will have 500 days left to live. And this 500 days is based on subtracting the time that he or she spend sleeping, working, 
tending to personal matters, which is, consists of hygiene, all chores, medical matters, <clears throat> eating, traveling, and some miscellaneous time stealing that are being stored from the next 35 years. So what, what are you saying, Pastor? When we think about all of this, when it comes down to stewardship, we often think uh, 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 men have got the, con got the um, misconception that dealing with stewardship is really just talking about money. But no, it goes, as we've been dealing with and teaching about stewardship, dealing with our time as well, dealing with our talents, dealing with our gifts. And even when it comes down to our, um, our sharing the gospel, when it comes down to our family and our lovers and our friends, is that that all entails with our time. And so, and so, and so it's, it's very important that we have to learn how we spend our time. Because, yes, we get, it's important for us to understand that because what's going to happen is that we got to stand before the judgment seat of God. And so, and so uh, I want us to just think about it. I'm just going to throw some, 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 some thoughts out there to get us to thinking about how important this t uh, our time is. And uh, I know someone said that uh, I would like to read the Bible, but I just don't have the time. If you were to read, it's been, uh, it been a study, a survey, and a study been done on this particular item or subject of uh, having, enough, having time to read the entire Bible. Read the 66 books of the Bible, uh, read from Genesis to Revelation. It says that at the speed of someone just reading a scripture, it would take 71 hours. Oh, are you, are you following me? It said, said, said just, just reading the scripture at a scripture at a speed that it would take. 71 hours. If you would break down them 72 hours into minutes and divide that into one year, it, that you will come up that uh, each day a person would just take 12 minutes a day. You could read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Let me say it again. It did the survey, and the survey says that the speed that it takes to read a scripture in a year's time be 71 hours. If you take that 71 hours, divide it into minutes, and it comes down to 12 minutes a day, we could cover reading from Genesis to Revelation. And so the question is, there is no really no excuse for us saying that we don't have the time. Because we got time for everything else that we want to do, but we don't want to give God 12 minutes. Now, now some, something, something is not adding up. Math is not adding up. Is that we got 12 minutes to talk on the phone. We got 12 minutes to uh, be on Facebook, be on social media. We got 12 minutes uh, uh, to, 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 to do this and to do that. But we don't, have, we don't have 12 minutes to devote and to let the Lord talk to us. We got excuses that I'm going to get around to it. And come to find out is that that day ends into, turns into weeks, and those weeks turns into months, and those months turn into years. And the sad thing that will happen is that when we die, is that we have never read the entire word of God. So when it comes down to us being good stewards, according to the word of God, 
is that we just can't be just hearers, but we got to be doers. Paul said we got to study the word. The psalmist teaches us that when we study it and then when we meditate upon it is that we have to apply it to our lives. And I discovered, my brothers and sisters, that part of the problem is is that we are holding on to some beliefs that, um, that, uh, that somewhat kind of dictate our behavior that uh, uh, results in us going against what the word of God declares. Because you got too many people who are doing what they think is right, but instead of doing what God has told us to do in the Bible, is that we're going about it our own way, our own thinking. And that's when Paul had to address that issue with those believers in Rome in that um, 10th chapter of Romans when he said, Brethren, was my heart desire prayer to God for Israel is that they would, might be saved. Paul continues saying that in that 10th chapter, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Or are you listening to me? They're going about to establish. They're going about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And Jesus had to address that particular issue, a situation here in this uh, sixth chapter uh, of, um, of Luke. Teaching. Here come droves of people coming out to hear Jesus. And Jesus, uh, in that, in that um, sixth chapter of Luke, read it when you get a chance. It's then that starting at the 46th verse, Jesus asked the question, why do you call me Lord? And you're not doing the things which I say. I think, I think uh, Eugene Peterson says in the message translation, he said, why are you so polite with me to always saying yes, sir, and that's right, sir, but never doing a thing I tell you. Jesus said, I'm getting tired of you saying, uh, calling me Lord. That Lord means he's the head. He's over your life. We always go around and, and, and say, Lord, uh, uh, I need this. Lord, I need you to help me over here. I need you to do this for me. Lord, I need a miracle. Lord, I need, I need you to give me wisdom. I need more patience. We, we use, we address him as Lord. Lord, help me to get this and help me to do that. We go around calling him Lord, but we don't want to do what he says do. And Jesus said, I'm not being oppressed with how you're addressing me. But you're not willing to do what I said do. Lord said, I'm not that, just you coming to church week after week, that does not impress me. Even the devil has a nerve to come to church. But the devil's intent is not to do the will or do what the word said. And what Jesus is saying is that he won't, what, what impresses him is when we allow the word to get into our hearts. So that the Holy Spirit can do a work on the inside. He, he, won't, he wants the Holy Spirit 
to do something to make a transformation on the inside so that what's on the inside will be a, 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 a change. And you read in that sixth chapter of uh, Luke, uh, 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 Jesus, Jesus says, said, you, you need to think on terms of whether you are like a rock or you like sand. Read it, read it when you get a chance in that 48 verse on down to uh, 49. We are a builder or a carpenter is going to build a house. Either you're going to build a house on a rock or build it on sand. So you're going to build it on a rock is that you're going to have to dig deep. You're going to dug. We're going to have a good foundation. But if you build it on sand, is that when the, uh, the rivers or when the water uh, should come, it's, it's going to wash it away. The foundation is not there. In other words, he was using the lot the the uh, 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 um, the house as an example of uh, wasting time, investing in good time. If you're going to build a house on sand, you're wasting time. But if you take the time out and build it on a solid, on a good rock, is that when the winds, when the storms come, that it's going to stand because the foundation is there. <clears throat> so you don't want to spend time building on sand. So Jesus was sent, giving them the, 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 the message is that think about how you're spending your time. Are you spending your time on the rock or are you spending your time on the sand? And if you're spending the time on sand, is that you're just wasting time. And so my brothers and sisters, we have to take into consideration and be reminded is that God knows all about our plans. He knows all about what we're planning and how we're going to accomplish it. And somewhere in those plans is that we have to make sure that God is somewhere in that uh, circle. Got to make sure that God is somewhere in that circle. But Jesus was saying that if you have not taken into consideration what he says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 through 27, as he was talking to us, he said, if anyone will come after me, he must what? Deny himself. Take up his cross. Follow me. For whosoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whosoever loses his life for me will what? Find it. So as good stewards, as good manager, is that uh, it's imperative of how we spend our time. It would not be based on what we have actually done. It would be, no, excuse me, it would be based rather on what we have actually done and not what we intended to do. Let me clarify that. Is that how we spend our time? It would not be based on what we have actually done. It would be based on what we have actually done. Not what we intended to do. 
The Lord is not going to reward us for good intention. And I think that's what Moses had in mind um, in that 90th number of Psalms is that um, it was his prayer, Lord, teach us to number our days. And the problem that we have as humans is that we, we uh, our problem is, is that we overestimating the time we have left. And if you had John the Baptist and uh, King Josiah, and Jesus was, was present, you have to ask the question, what did all three of them have in common? And when you think about all three of them, when you think about John the Baptist and King Josiah and that uh, second, um, 22nd chapter of 2 King, and, and Jesus, all of them had an appointment with death before they reached their 40th birthday. They did not reach the age of 40. Yet each one of them find time to do the will of God for their lives. So I, want, I just want to challenge us. Is that let us think about the reality is that we do not know how much time we have left to give in service to God and to each other. And think about it just for a moment. Well, think about it. Just for an instance, if you had only 20 hours, 24 hours left to live, what would you do? Just think about it. You know you only had a week a month, how, how would you invest? What would you do? But since we don't know when our time is going to come to an end, is that we have to invest now, because we don't know what tomorrow is going to behold, since the clock is ticking on us. Because the chance that the, the time and the chances that we have now is that it's going to come to an end. You cannot say you love God and don't spend time with God. You cannot say you love new hope or love the church without investing some time in the ministries of the church. You cannot say you love God. All of that, you got to spend some time. And let me say this here for clarity, because uh, I don't want nobody to uh, misinterpret uh, uh, dealing with matters in our time. As good studs, it does not mean we spend every waking moment of our life trying to get to the church and do something in the name of the church. Good studs. Realize that God has given each of us a certain number of days to live, and we have to use, manage that time wisely. And there will never be a better time for us to begin serious to serve the Lord than right now. That's what it means to be a good steward. Because each of us determine each day just how much of time we're going to invest in doing what God have called us to do. Because I discovered, listen, that if you do not have time for God in your schedule, you do not have much of God in your spirit. 
Oh, Lord, that's good teaching right there. Let me say that again. If you do not have time for God in your schedule, that means you do not have much God in your spirit. And we have to, we have to be mindful of talking about God told me this and God said this. And, and God don't even really know who you are. So check your time. I think that, 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 that's a good spot to stop there and to challenge us is, is that uh, keep in mind the clock is ticking. It's running, it's running out and God is going to require of us to give an account of our time. And let me say this for clarity is that we cannot invest time in God without investing time in each other. That those go hand to hand. So since the clock is ticking, we need to make sure that since we know time is running out, time is not on our, it's not on our, in our favor. It's getting away from us. But have you taken into consideration what God requires of you? And that first step is to know, to know that you're saved. Yeah, know that. You're not saved, get, get there. Confess, acknowledge him as your Lord and your Savior. You want to make him the Lord of your life. Get that because time is, is winding up. And once we are saved, then we want to live the life that God has called us to be. God bless you and God keep you. It's our prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for seeing something in each one of us that we did not see in ourselves. Thank you to God that you saved us. You, you touch our mind, you touch our heart, right in the nick of time to come to acknowledgement of who you are. Continue to bless us. Continue, to oh God, to let us know that time is winding up. Destruction is truly in the land. We know that you're going to soon come. And, Father, help us to keep our mind stayed on you. Keep our heart to God pure and clean, a heart that is like you to, to love you and to love everybody. Bless us now. And Father, we're going to bless you. We'll tell a word what a great God you are. Continue to hold us in these unprecedented times that we find ourselves living, struggling, but God, we know that you still hold the world in your hands and we trust you. Bless us now in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen.